Welcome to lesson one. In this lesson, we'll be painting a dead tree silhouetted on a vivid sunset sky. Please make sure that you've watched the lesson one warm up so that you're familiar with the reference material required for this lesson. Here's the lesson one example painting, which we'll be using as a guide. You can see there are a lot of branches in my example. I'll let you decide how many branches you want to include in your painting because it can be time consuming. In the distance, there's a flock of birds, which were created using an image hose nozzle included in the class workspace. Let's load this image into the reference image palette, and we can go ahead and start the painting. Locate your reference image palette, and then click on the bottom left icon to open the reference image, and select the lesson one example, and go to open, and there you go, you can see your reference image. If you want to make it larger or smaller, you can. You can also zoom in and out. You have to hold control to zoom out rather than alt, which is what you would use to zoom out of your canvas here. But this will just give us a guide. We don't have to copy this exactly. I'm not going to copy it exactly, but I'm just going to use this as kind of a blueprint. So you do the same. If you want to make different changes to yours or use a different composition or different colors, go ahead and do that. Let's create a new canvas. We'll go to File and we'll go to New and we want to change our dimensions to inches and it's best to set your resolution first so we'll set our resolution here to 150 that's a pretty good resolution for printing and we will want to set our width and height next so we'll set the width to 14 and the height to 11. Now the reason why I choose these dimensions is because this is a standard paper and frame size so if you want to after this lesson you could print this out We'll go to OK to select these options and make sure that you have color and paper just set to their defaults here. And now we have a canvas. You're going to see me use some keyboard shortcuts here. I'm going to use spacebar, hold down spacebar and tap and drag to position my canvas. You'll also see me hit tab now and then to hide my palettes because sometimes when you're painting you can accidentally click a button or drag a palette and that gets kind of obnoxious. So. I use tab a lot to hide my palettes and restore them. Now you'll want to be using the same workspace that I'm using, which is the workspace I've provided in the class resources. And when you load yours, it may look a little different than mine does because I have my palettes kind of spread out on a bigger screen. And some of you might have smaller screens like laptops. So when you get your palettes, they may come in all kind of condensed like this. You can drag them from the top bar here to move them around. Be careful not to drag them from the tab because that will actually move the tab and it might break it off. If you want you can rearrange these however you like if you're familiar with how to arrange the palettes but I'm gonna have mine like this so that we can see everything all at the same time. Let's go ahead and start painting now. We'll define the horizon first. That'll make it easier to compose the piece. So we will create a new layer and we'll call it horizon Let's make the composite method multiply. Let's select black and we will choose the rectangular selection tool. We'll start drawing from outside of our canvas to the opposite side. Just drag a box like so. And then we will use the fill command to fill it with current color, which is black. Then we will do a control D to deselect the selection. Now we have a nice horizon here. Now we can go ahead and create another layer and move it below the horizon layer and we'll call it sky. This is going to be our sky. Now as I mentioned in the lesson one warm up, we're going to be using the Grisaille technique where we start with a grayscale painting to establish our values and then we add a glazing of color over it to make it look more realistic. So we will go ahead and just use the fill command along with a medium gray, so a gray that's somewhere in the middle, to fill our sky layer with gray. This will just be our base color. And when you're using the Grisaille technique, you typically want to make your value a little bit lighter than you normally would because since you're gonna be tinting over it, that's gonna make it a little bit darker. I'm going to select the digital airbrush and we'll go ahead and paint a gradient in the sky as we normally do. This one will be just a little bit different than the normal daylight sky that we've done before. So we'll go to a slightly darker gray and use a pretty big airbrush. I'm going to hit tab to make my palettes go away. And I'm going to make it darker at the top because that's further from the light source. Our light source is going to be near the horizon, a setting sun. 
And I'm going to do kind of a arcing here because I want the gradient to be kind of radial. I'm also going to kind of vignette the sides just a little bit so that it's darker near the edges. This will really make it look like there's a light source in the center here that's kind of fading away. And I'm going to pick a lighter gray and I'm going to paint kind of right around here. This is where my main light source is going to be. You won't actually be able to see the sun, but you'll be able to see where it's at because the light will be peering through. So somewhere in that area there is going to be our sun. So now that we have a better idea of what our sky is going to look like, let's finish off our horizon. So what we want to do is we want to make it not so flat. So we will use the scratch board tool to just paint over it using black. Now you want to keep it pretty flat overall. Just give it a little bit of variation, a little bit of slope. That'll make it look a little more natural. And then it doesn't need to be so sharp because this is going to be one of the most distant objects in the painting. So we will use the blur brush to blur it. Now you can just press down pretty firmly and paint over it and go back and forth a few times just kind of scrubbing over it and each time you pass over it you're going to make it more and more blurry. I'd go over it about seven or eight times until it's really blurry and looks more distant. I think that looks good for the horizon. So let's go back to the sky layer now and we can start working on the clouds. Let's create a new layer for the clouds. We'll call it clouds of course and we'll make the composite method screen let's pick a light gray color like this I like to make clouds using the jitter airbrush and we'll go ahead and start near the bottom near the bottom we want the clouds to be kind of thin and long and flat and then as we near the top we want them to get broader and more spaced apart so I'm going to use kind of a smaller brush here and I'm going to paint in some light kind of cloud areas. These will be pretty horizontal starting out. And then I'll make my brush bigger as I move towards the top of the canvas. I'm going to start to leave more gaps and more spacing in between. Keep increasing my brush size and going for something like this that looks it already looks a lot like clouds in black and white. Just go over it as much as you need to, to get it looking right. If it looks nice and layered, then you know you're doing a good job. And something like that works. We'll create another layer. Let's move it underneath the clouds and let's call it clouds shadow. And this will be some dark areas behind the clouds to kind of help them pop out. So let's make that composite method multiply and we'll pick a dark gray this time. We'll use the same jitter airbrush and we'll paint in some darker clouds. These are kind of just in between some of the clouds that are already there. They're kind of behind them, but they're in that void that's in between. And then we'll want to blend it a little bit now so that the clouds near the horizon aren't so sharp because they're the most distant clouds. So we're going to use diffuse blur for that. And we'll start with the clouds layer here. This is the lighter clouds. And I'm just using kind of medium pressure with kind of circular strokes going back and forth and scrubbing over it. We'll go to the cloud shadow layer and we'll do the same just near the horizon there. That makes it look a little more distant. Next, we'll add some sharp detail to these clouds. So let's go ahead and let's just merge the clouds, the cloud shadow and the sky layer together. We'll select them all. You hold shift after selecting clouds and then select sky and then you do control E on your keyboard to merge them. Let's call this sky plus clouds so that we know what it is. And let's select the coarse oily blender. The reason why we merge these together is because we want these colors to blend together. So you may want to zoom in for this a little bit when you're painting, as I'm going to do here. And what you want to do is you want to kind of paint in the areas where the light meets the dark. 
and you want to make it look like the top edges of the clouds are kind of covering these dark areas. So right here is a good example, this cloud here. I'm going to use kind of circular winding strokes. I have my opacity set to 16, my grain set to 13, and I'm using the basic paper with these settings here. You can vary these settings to get some different results if you want to. These are working pretty good. And again, I'm just looking for those areas where the light meets the dark. And what this is doing is this is giving the clouds a nice layered effect now. You want there to be an even balance of sharp contrast and smooth contrast. Smooth contrast is that kind of soft area that blends together where you can't really tell where one area begins and one area ends, and the sharp is the, the definite light on dark contrast that you can really make out clearly. And it's good to have that balance. So I'm not blending everywhere and I'm not just blending arbitrarily, just doing it by eye more or less. But you're trying to make the tops of the clouds more distinct than the bottoms of the clouds. And down here near the horizon, you wanna make your brush a little bit smaller. You don't need to do quite as much work on these ones down here. And once we have something like that that looks pretty good, we'll want to blend it a little bit more using the Diffuse Blur Blender. You don't want to blend up everything, and I'm using kind of light, kind of big, swirling strokes now. I'm kind of lifting up and tapping down. I'm kind of going like I'm kind of dusting it almost. What that's doing is that's blending it, but it's not over blending it, and it's just blending it in a few little places. I'm concentrating on any places that are kind of too harsh, that stand out too much to me. You're probably looking at this and wondering, how the heck is this even going to end up looking like a sunset when it's all gray like this? But you'll see in a minute, we'll do some magic here. Now we're ready to start adding color with a color glaze. So we will create a new layer and we'll call it color glaze. And we want this to be a multiply composite method to make it tint what's underneath it. And we'll want this to be above the sky and clouds but below the horizon layer. And so the first color that we'll start with is this kind of ultraviolet color here. Now when you're doing a glaze, you're gonna wanna pick a lighter color because it's going on top of something that's probably gonna be darker and so you don't want it to be too dark. So what we want to do is we want to pick the hue first, so it's kind of a bluish purple, and then we'll just do a little test. We'll pick kind of a light violet like this and paint and see if this works. We'll use the scratch board tool. We'll just paint a little bit on there and we'll see if that works. I think that works, but we'll make it a little bit more saturated, something like that. We'll go ahead and just fill this layer with that color and then we will select the digital airbrush and we'll select kind of a, a bright orange like this and we'll do a test and see if this works i think this is a good color to start with we want to make a gradient that kind of again does that kind of arching thing and we want it to fade nicely from orange to purple in between the orange and purple, we'll put some kind of brighter red-orange. And you can see now this underpainting of gray really helps this look a lot like a sky, and it makes it a lot easier to figure out how to paint a sky rather than just kind of taking a guess at it. It's up to you how bright you want to make things and how much you want to tint. I recommend not really using yellow. You want to stick to probably this violet color and fuchsias and red oranges and oranges. Don't go into the yellow though, because we'll add that in separately. Let's see how we have a nice transition here. I'm gonna add some more red orange in this top area here. I think that looks pretty good. Now we'll want to blend this a little bit with the background. So we can go ahead and merge these layers again. I'm going to hold shift and click on the sky clouds layer. And I'm going to merge them with control E. And let's just call this sky. 
and we'll blend it the same way we did last time. We'll start with the coarse oily blender. And this time we want to look for areas where one color meets another color. So where this purple kind of contrasts with this fuchsia, I'm blending here because when I start blending over the fuchsia pink color, what it does is it kind of makes that stand out more and it kind of puts it in front of the purple that's behind it. So you want to stick to these areas that are kind of the same. You don't really want to go vertically and start painting up and down like that because you'll kind of mess everything up. I'm kind of trying to stay horizontal here. And then see, I'll go down to where the orange starts to meet the red. I'll make that kind of stand out a little bit. This is really making it look like there's lots of layers of overlapping clouds now. But sometimes you just have to think outside the box to get results that you wouldn't normally get if you were trying to do this with paint. You really wouldn't be able to do it this way with acrylics or oils. When we get, start to get down here towards the horizon, we can kind of do some more horizontal zigzags because we still want all this stuff to look pretty flat. You don't have to blend everything. Just a little bit here and there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna zoom out to check my progress. I see an area here that I don't like that I'm gonna fix. There we go, that's much better. And of course we will want to blend it using the diffuse blur. So we'll do that. You wanna to try to avoid painting near the edges of your canvas because what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull in some white fringe you may have to blend near the edges, and you may have to get the fringe, but I'll show you how to get rid of it here in a second. I'm just doing these kind of light tapping strokes to just blend this up a little bit here and there. And we'll zoom in now and look for this fringe. So I can see it all kind of happened here. There's really easy ways to get rid of it. What you can do is you can use the Distorto brush and just kind of push it outside the canvas using short little taps, pushing it towards the edge of the canvas. You don't want to push from too far inside the canvas out because you can obviously pull your paint. So you just want to push out just that white area. Just look all around the edges for it. that happens in any of your paintings, now you know how to get rid of it. Still see a little bit more there on the edge. Okay, now we're looking good. Now let's add another layer, and this will be for some clouds that are kind of dark in the foreground. We can pick a dark reddish orange color like this. We'll set the composite method to multiply and we will use the Jitter Airbrush. Make it kind of small, and we'll put in some clouds that are kind of standing out a little bit more. We'll even just do a little bit over this dark area that we put in there. Just want a few of these. They don't need to be the focal point in the piece. Something like that will work. And let's blend them up a little bit using the coarse oily blender first. Just focus on the top edge. Don't worry about the bottom edge. And you don't need to blend them much. Just give them a little something. We'll use the diffuse blur to blend them up and soften them. 